Over the last 100 years, the hands of countless men and women around the world have helped mold and shape Eastman into the successful company it is today. Those hands felled the timber that brought George Eastman to Kingsport and supplied photographic chemicals for his Eastman Kodak company. In the decades that followed, they built buildings, shoveled coal, loaded and unloaded rail cars. They welded pipes and vessels, operated equipment, and spun yarn. They filled test tubes and manipulated molecules to develop innovative products and solutions that continue to enhance the quality of life in a material way for people across the globe. Today, we pay tribute to the lasting legacy those hands have built and to the innovative spirit of the Eastman men and women whose curiosity and collaboration will continue to improve lives, communities, and the world into the next century. And welcome everyone to this special celebration, continuing to celebrate more than 100 years of innovation at Eastman. I'm Brad Belode in Corporate Communications. I am Laura Woods with the Law Department. And this is not the big reveal. This is not why you all are here. The reason that you all are here is because of what's behind us. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever this might find you. We are thrilled that you've joined us because we have a wonderful program for you. Yeah, it's gonna be full of surprises. And the big thing right here, it is a big surprise. 23 feet tall, we're not gonna give it away yet, but it is part of the continuing celebration of our centennial that got a little bit disrupted along the way, but here we are deep into year number 101, still celebrating. Well, that's what we do here at Eastman. I mean, a centennial wasn't able to be captured in just one year. We certainly were, we certainly were not going to let something like a pandemic keep us from continuing the celebration. So what we have behind us is something that has been imagined, designed, created, crafted, installed, you name it, it's all been done right here by your Eastman colleagues. We didn't need a consultant for this because we had the ingenuity ourselves to make this happen. You're going to love it. By Eastman people, for Eastman people, as a gift to the many generations of Eastman folks uh, who are still to come uh, with us. Um, this site here outside the Corporate Business Center in Kingsport has been under construction for weeks. A lot of people have been very curious about what it is. Is it landscaping? Is it a water feature? Is it a fountain? Today, we're finally going to reveal what that is. But again, we're not quite ready to do that. You're going to have to stay with us just a little bit longer because we want to show you all of the things that led up to this creation behind us as well. Yeah, it's great. We do have some folks actually looking out the window here, so it's great to have that that socially distanced crowd. We've got a whole team here to help bring this to you. We're going to go over to Brad Leifert, who is at the base of this sculpture, to tell us a little bit more. Thank you, Brad. Very good morning, Brad and Laura. That's right. I'm outside the doors of the CBC. You can see the sculpture in the background. Uh, crews are preparing to do the unveiling. A, a sculpture this size takes a 64 by 64 feet veil. Eastman folks around the world will be doing the math on that. Uh, these folks want everyone to see the sculpture. We want to see it, but not quite yet. We're going to be back in a few minutes. Back to you, Brad. Thank you, Brad. What a tremendous team that has been responsible for making this happen. It's a great team. It's, no, it's over at the big shop, what we have here at Tennessee Operations. Wonderful group of people, and we have Jen Hieronymo, who is over at Building 215, who's ready to tell us a little bit more about that group. Good morning. Thank you so much, Laura. Yes, we're here live in front of Building 215 over near the manufacturing site. We have a surprise here, too, that we want to show you, but you'll have to wait just a few minutes for that. In the meantime, I'd like to talk to you about Building 156, also known as the Big Shop. It's where they build columns, vessels, and other components and parts for our manufacturing sites around the world. Here with me today is Mark Vogel, site leader for Tennessee Operations, and Craig Schmidt. Craig is the superintendent of Centralized Maintenance and Services. Mark? Thanks, Jen. You know, there are a lot of things that make the Kingsport site unique compared to other chemical facilities around the world. And the Big Shop is certainly one of those things. 
whenever we have a big project or expansion or even day-to-day -day maintenance work requiring fabrication or repair of columns, tanks, vessels, exchangers, etc., cetera, um, we're, we're really proud that we can execute this work. It's the people in the big shop that make it happen. And, and as I said, we're very proud to have this capability to do this kind of work in-house. That's right, Mark. The, the, what goes on at the big shop, they have a long legacy, 80 years of doing that work, and we couldn't run our operations without them. So let's take a look for a moment behind the scenes at the big shop. Good morning, folks. We're here at the Eastman Building 156 Big Shop in Kingsport, Tennessee. I'm Jeff Taylor. I'm the department manager here for Shops Department. Uh, inside these walls, and you've probably heard about us before, we uh, support vessel fabrication as well as machining uh, across the TNO site as well as at other sites, and we support a lot of new capital for the company. As you can imagine, it's a tremendous strategic advantage for this company and this site in particular because of our response time. If you'll bear with me here for a few minutes, we're going to go on a little more in-depth tour and see what our folks and the men and women inside of here are capable of doing. Thank you. I failed to mention it outside, but we have about 60,000 square feet of floor space in here and the shop was brought into service somewhere in the 1940s. So we've been around for a long time. Right here, this is one of our older horizontal boring mills. It's a smaller machine. We have two larger ones and we use these all the time for anything from flat facing a flange, boring holes, multiple things that some of the local shops around us are not able to do. So this, this machine's a competitive advantage for us as well as many others, allow us to return some of these components to service on a short time window, as well as for new vessel builds. And then we're gonna move next to our one of our newer five axis CNC machines. So you can see some of the state of the art things we have here as well. Okay, so this is our big Integrex. It's one of our newer machines, not the newest, but it's a newer machine. It is a five axis CNC machining center. Our shift folks actually keep this machine manned pretty much 24 seven. So we have enough work for our stores and also for our new vessel builds and reactive work, things that break around the site to keep this machine running around the clock. Main thing to remember about this is since it's a five axis machine with tool changing capability, it's one of the most productive machines we have out on the shop floor. Okay, we're here in what's called the White House portion of the big shop. Uh, I've always thought that it was called the White House because it's air conditioning, or maybe it's because of the white paint on the walls. Anyway, the reason it's air conditioned is the tolerances we're able to hold in here. We need to keep it a pretty controlled environment from a temperature standpoint. These guys in here can grind things down to about three millionths of an inch on the diameter in terms of plus or minus tolerance. We're starting to move further north, deeper into the big shop. Uh, where we start to transition from the machining part of the operation into the vessel fab world. Uh, this piece of equipment is our one of our newer pieces of equipment. It's a water jet cutting machine. Uh, we put it in here, I'm thinking roughly four or five years ago. Basically, it uses a high pressure water stream and garnet to cut metal plates. So when you start thinking about vessel fab and even a bunch of machine components on the site, a lot of them start with flat plate as the raw material. So. This machine stays in operation roughly 24 seven. Our shift machining organization also operates it, just like the big integrates that I showed you before. And uh, one thing I did fail to mention earlier is that our shift machinists are also first responders, emergency responders for the site. So whenever the fire alarm goes off, the guys go running out of here. The thought process behind that is they can park these machines safely and move out there and see what kind of emergency is going on in the plant. Our folks can weld carbon steel, stainlesses, all the duplex steels, all the way up through copper and titanium. They're actually fabricators. So welding is just one part of fabrication. There's a lot of math and a lot of geometry and a lot of fitting skills that go into actual vessel fab. If you imagine something like this started with flat plates, maybe some cylindrical heads that we've had made somewhere else, it takes a lot more than just welding to be a vessel fabricator. It kind of goes without saying that our machinists do a ton of math too. So I just wanted to underscore some of that. I think a lot of times people don't realize how technical these folks' positions are out here. All right, thank you everybody. Really appreciate you taking the time just to hear about a fraction of what we're able to do here in 156 Big Shop. Uh, 
It's been my pleasure to take you through this tour. I love this place. It's like family over here. It never ceases to amaze me the things these folks are able to do and the, the kind of ditches they're able to pull us out of as a company. Wow, that was terrific. We'd like to thank Jeff Taylor for taking us on the tour of the big shop. It sure is an amazing place. So in, we have the sculpture in front of the corporate business center. We have something here in front of building 215, but we're not quite ready to show you that yet. So for now, we'll send it back over to Brad and Laura in front of the CBC. Wow, what an impressive team. Very, very impressive. I'm not surprised. I've had an opportunity to hang, hang out with the people who were over in the big shop uh, for a while now. and it's just amazing their level of commitment to their craftsmanship and their creativity. And you're going to see it again here in just a little bit. It's called the tease, but their creativity is just off the charts. And they are just a great example of how everybody here at Eastman, they always bring their A game. Like the bar is set so high if you come to work here and the big shop exemplifies that. Doesn't matter what team you're a part of, procurement, legal, IT, finance, supply yeah. chain, everybody brings their A game. And that's really what this, this sculpture is a celebration of, of the commitment over the last 101 years and for the next 100 year, one years of uh, the Eastman ethic. We want to hear more about that. We're going to go back over to Brad Leifert, who's at the base of the sculpture. Thank you, Bradford. Yes, I'm here with CEO Mark Costa. Mark, thanks for being here to talk about this, uh, the unveiling and the impact on Eastman today. That's great to be here, Brad. Really excited. You know, this is a great moment for all the employees and all the employees of the past. So uh, looking forward to the unveiling. So, Mark, a centennial celebration is about the, the legacy of a company. So when the sculpture is unveiled, what do you want folks to, to think and feel when they see it? Well, when you think about this, it's a great moment, a celebration, a monument even, to the history of our company. We're in our 101st year, which we were doing this last year on our centennial, but we'll take it now, uh, to really celebrate the progress we've made over the last hundred years. We've been an innovator enhancing the quality of life uh, for people around the world. Uh, and it's an exciting time to reflect on all that and think about our future. You know, when we, we, we invested and really made this pivot to be very innovation focused, especially in the last uh, you know, eight years, we've seen people come together, we've seen us innovate. And this statue uh, looks at the contributions that people have made, which are the heart of this company, as well as the assets and technologies and how we bring all of that together. Uh, and this is, you know, a time for us also to recognize that we're building a phenomenal future for the next 100 years. Uh, and this is a statue to inspire everyone as we go forward. I'd also like to make a few comments around the team that's right over there uh, who built this statue and the phenomenal job they did. Uh, this is an incredible piece of art. You know, the design and the creativity was fantastic. And the way the team came together and, and built it was impressive. In fact, I got a chance to go over there and watch some of their work as well as a few other executive teams and they put us to work and and tried to see if we could actually weld you know made an attempt um, but I have a deep appreciation now for how hard it is to do a weld like that um, and uh, it's amazing to see this structure so we're excited. Very good Mark you know when you think about the last couple of years the global Eastman team has faced and dealt with a lot of challenges a couple of them will be the China trade war the global pandemic when history is written about how this global team responded to, to those challenges, what story do you what story do you want to be told? I, you know, I think it's what's always made Eastman great is how we come together as a team. Uh, no, no matter what we face, the challenges we face, we face many. If you think about it, all the way over in history, wars, recessions, challenges, and then a global trade war followed by a pandemic was the ultimate test of uh, our people, our portfolio, our market positions. You know, we held up incredibly well. We outperformed our peers uh, last year and really showed the power of how Eastman can come together, manage and keep everyone safe first and foremost, keep our costs under control in the tough time, but still most importantly, keep our innovation going. We've locked in a huge amount of revenue from innovation this year already and are on track to set a record on that. But that's because of the way we engage and work with our customers and the innovation that we bring to the market every day. So perseverance, the dedication, the teamwork, you know, that is what makes us a great company and why I'm so confident in our future. Mark, thanks for your thoughts. So glad you could be here today. We all look forward to the unveiling later. We look forward to seeing your well. So thank you for being here.
Thank you. And, uh, don't focus on my will. The other ones are much better. Thank you, Mark. Bradford, Laura, back to you. Thank you, Bradley. Wow, we are getting so close now. The yeah. drone is in the air. I see more faces pressed against the window up here. As Mark talked about, this is a monument, a celebration, not just of perseverance, of overcoming challenges, but also the thread of innovation that's been across Eastman for more than 100 years. Brad, I think I know what the sculpture is. I've got a guess. Are you ready? It's E.T. in the back, again. <laughs> right? No? Look Keep it up. guessing. Look it up, kid. You'll understand it. But it's not E.T. in the basket. We are close to having the, the reveal here in just a minute. But just as we said before, the big shop is such a great example of how everybody here at the company has an opportunity to contribute to the innovation that we see, the way that we grow, and our longevity here. And what's behind us, that's going to live on for many, many years to come. And we talk a lot about innovation, and that tends to come up as product, right, you know, which is natural to who we are. Um, and we're always striving to, cr of course, create more value in both products and services we can provide to our customers. But innovation isn't everywhere. It's in how we do finance. It's how we do our supply chain and optimize getting product to the market more effectively and efficiently. It's how we manufacture our plants be you know, with better quality every day. It's how we you know, improve our safety every day. And a lot of those functional and operational improvements are one little project at a time. They're not sort of silver bullet, you know, game-changing things. It's great people seeing an opportunity to improve, you know, safety risk or seeing a way we could, you know, do our order planning a little bit more efficiently. You know, it requires that dedication of just being better every day. One of the things that we do really well is to improve whatever we have in front of us. A lot of companies, they, they'll build a plant and br the brand new plant is the best it will ever be. At Eastman, when that plant, brand new plant starts up, that's the worst it will ever be because we're going to improve it from there. It's going to make more, it's going to make it better, and it's going to make it cheaper in, in, in the long run. And so that's innovation. That, that is the innovation at the heart of Eastman is most of, mostly that, the small innovations that build to incremental improvements over time, over time, compounding those over time just like interest rate. And pretty soon you get a big idea. Those big ideas are nurtured in a culture that fosters collaboration and a can-do attitude. The culture of Eastman is really amazing in terms of how we consider Eastman as a family. But when we are in Eastman, we consider each other as team members. We collaborate, we work, we, are, we have competition, we have the aspiration to win. But when we go outside of Eastman, we are all a big family because we bring in community as well. And one of the things I really like about the company is we have a task, we get it done, right? And so um, being able to drive to, to outcome is really something that's important. And also a, a way that it's unique because we're so nice, um, but we still can drive to outcomes and get things done. And I can tell you there is no mission, no objective that Eastman team members uh, can't accomplish um, when they're working together and, and, and they do that very, very well. And Laura, when folks see this sculpture, I think they will recognize the power Eastman has to improve the quality of life in a material way and become the leading innovation, material innovation company for the next century. Absolutely. And one of the great things about it, we've talked about how our centennial has continued you know, past uh, what was actually our centennial year in part because of the pandemic but that's what we have done here at this company throughout the pandemic we haven't let that slow us down we haven't let that stop us from reaching our goals the big shop is no different we have the sculpture here behind us because they kept working through the pandemic just like everybody else did absolutely you know you know what i think it's time is it it is it is we're going to start the unveiling proceedings by going over to brad lyford who's over there with mark cox That's right, Bradford. Uh, I'm here with Mark Cox. Mark wants to have a few words before the big reveal. Mark? Well, thank you, Brad. And here we are on a beautiful cool summer morning in Kingsport, Tennessee. And I just want to say how proud I am of everyone who has been involved in this project. A lot of Eastman men and women involved, and especially our crafts personnel. You know, when this idea was presented to us 18 months ago, we were very excited. Unfortunately, we couldn't do what we wanted to do 18 months ago, uh, and that is reveal this wonderful gift that our craftspeople have created for the ages uh, in July of 2020. However, we've adapted again despite COVID, and today we're so happy and pleased to be here and be able to present this gift 
to the Eastman community in recognition of the work done by so many Eastman men and women over the last 100 years in, in anticipation of the bright future we have ahead. So with that, uh, have, we have invited all of our build team to come around this piece of art, and it is time for the reveal. Five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. And we knew it was going to be beautiful, but this is amazing. Very impressive. It is indeed. And of course, as we've told you all before already, it is 23 feet tall, weighs just a little bit more than 5,000 pounds. What this shows, it is the power of these employees to turn molecules into solutions that improve the lives of people everywhere. This is a methanol molecule, which represents not only our rich history, George Eastman used methanol in his photographic business, but it also represents our future. As we know, we are building a methanolysis plant at our two sports medicine society. So this is something that shows what our history has been, as well as what the bright future is that we have for the company. Yeah, and then, Laura, you can see the folks who are there, The uh, just a, a fraction of the teams that helped contribute to building of this statue. It is really quite amazing. Um, I, I think it's going to become a landmark, not just for Eastman, but frankly, for the Appalachian Highlands region as a whole. Um, the tail of the tape here, more than 4,000 pavers are in that circle surrounding the sculpture. Uh, each finger weighs about 250 pounds. Big boy there. Yeah. The molecule itself weighs 900 pounds and has its own foundation. So, again, impressive work. Again, designed, implemented, put together by Eastman people as a gift for Eastman people now and in the future. And I think uh, the team that you see that is standing there in front of the sculpture that is a core group who worked on this. Of course, it took a lot of people in order to make this happen, but we certainly could not let this moment go without recognizing this phenomenal group right here in front of you. So let's give them a round of applause. Yes, well. yes, absolutely. Thank you, Eastman team members. You all are awesome. It, it, it's kind of small relative to the giant statue, but there is a plaque on the back side, and we're going to go over to uh, Mr. Lyford again uh, to tell us what's on that. That's right, Bradford. So I'm, I'm back here with Mark Cox. Mark is, is obviously very proud. He knows the big shot. He knows these folks. Uh, there is a plaque here. And uh, Mark, would you, would you mind reading that plaque to the, to the world? Well, Brad, it'd be my pleasure. And, and let me again say how proud I am of our crafts personnel who envisioned this, designed it, and built it safely without incident. We are so proud of them. It's a, it's a monument for the ages. And I would like to read the plaque that is inscribed on the back of the hand. It says, this monument is dedicated to Eastman team members around the world in celebration of the Eastman centennial. Through times of trial and success, Eastman has grown and endured for 100 years. Our shared values have united the Eastman team and guided our efforts toward a common purpose of improving life for others. From the first log to float the Holston River in Kingsport, Tennessee, to future challenges unknown, our products have and will continue to enhance the quality of life in a material way. This monument was designed and constructed by the men and women in the Building 156 Big Shop of the Centralized Maintenance and Services Division in Kingsport, Tennessee. These talented craftspeople present this monument as a reminder of the innovation, values, collective effort, and perseverance that have brought us this far and will carry us through the next 100 years and beyond. That's outstanding, an outstanding tribute to the legacy of the men and women who came before us, to the legacy of the men and women who are here today, and to a bright future for Eastman men and women who will come after us. Thank you, Mark. That That is amazing. I uh, can't wait for everyone to come by and see this plaque. Uh, Laura, Brad, back to you. What a great day. What a great moment for Eastman, Laura. 
always big and always so many great things to celebrate here at the company. We want to go back out to Jen at Building 215 because they're still celebrating too. Thanks, Laura. Such an exciting day for the big shop. They must be so full of pride for sure. 18 months of work and effort finally come to fruition, not only in front of the corporate business center, but right here in front of Building 215 as well. The structure to my right is an acetic acid molecule. Some of you might recognize it. Uh, originally, the design for the, the, the old hand had an acetic acid molecule as part of it, but a decision was made that methanol was a good tie from our past to our future. And so we needed to find a home for acetic acid in no better place than right here at, Mich at uh, Tennessee Operations. So just like the old hand, this is made out of scrap material that the big shop fabricated. Um, it, uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, anyone can come here and see it. It's outside the fence line. They can sit on it. They can stand near it, whatever, snap a selfie and, and get a part of history here because the acetic acid means a great deal to this, to this uh, manufacturing site. Craig, you know, you've been aware of this project for quite some time. What are your impressions of the sculpture and all of it? Thank you, Jan. What you're seeing is creativity, originality, and ingenuity to develop a vision, put it on paper, design, engineer, and fabricate, and then install. You are seeing tremendous capability of our team. What you're seeing is just incredibly incredible, and I feel fortunate to be part of this team. Great, thanks, Craig. So we've talked a little bit about the team that put this together from the big shop. We thought it'd be interesting for you to learn how this was put together. So let's watch this video together. When the gang from Build One came down and kind of pulled us in and invited us to be a part of the project, I asked Tracy, I said, well, what, you know, do you have anything in mind? She said, we know we want there to be a molecule in it somewhere. We ended up on uh, methanol because that's, that's what Eastman started out doing. Uh, you know, cutting wood to distill methanol, wood alcohol. It just felt right that that's what we should what we should make the molecule. The marionette concept with a with a molecule just it just made sense, you know, right away because that's basically what Eastman does is is manipulates molecules. I wanted this sculpture to represent the hundred years of people that it took to make Eastman the company that it is. The hand represents the people and the molecule represents their crafts and responsibilities. When Jason showed me the design, my first reaction was, where on earth are we gonna put this at Eastman? And then followed by, how big is this gonna be and how heavy will it be? I never would have dreamed of go you know, design a structure or a foundation for a 23 foot tall hand and that's just not something I'd ever thought I'd be asked to do at, at, at Eastman. I was like, we're going to build a what? <laughs> yeah, that's better. That's pretty much there you what go. I did. <laughs> I just told him, whenever you're ready to start building, I'm ready. So I didn't really think it would be that big of a deal. <laughs> we just recycled a surplus metal. So we've got very little material cost in the actual sculpture itself. You don't really build everything like by the number. It's more by, I guess, feel or whatever. Because all the metal, you think metal stays straight whenever you weld and tack it or it moves a lot. And then you kind of have to chase it thought from the beginning to the end to get the product exactly where you want it. It's not something we were used to doing but kind of we was, you know, same aspect, we weld, we fab, we fit, things like that, but just building a hand, you know, and an arm, it's a whole different ballgame, because you don't really have anything to go off of. You're just figuring everything out as you go. There are many considerations that went into the design. We obviously didn't want to mess with Jason's vision, his artistic vision for the, the monument, so coming up with an internal structure to support it, that would not be visible outside of the hand was the key consideration. When you think about the designing for when for this kind of structure, this kind of sculpture, we design it the same way that we're designing a building. We don't want it to fall over at all. 
and we're thinking about wind and wind uh, values that we've seen historically in, in Kingsport. So it's built to the same design codes that you would build a, a building. And in this case, it's designed for about 120 mile per hour, three seconds sustained wind gust. I mean, outside of COVID, I, the biggest challenge is just making sure it all comes together. So you've got the, the work that's been done at the shop. So actually making the, the monument, the sculpture, and then trying to get that tied into the, the foundation and all the site work uh, that we're doing out in the circle at building one. So seeing that all come together, um, I mean, uh, Jason and Josh came up with this, and Casey too, this uh, paver plan, and we came up with a very uh, detailed <laughs> uh, out there uh, pattern to put out there. So just getting all those details together and make sure it would all come together uh, and be able to kind of put together as secretly as we could um, right in front of a, an audience that's right behind a whole bunch of glass so was, a, was a challenge. COVID kind of helped hide it because nobody was really allowed in the shop during the COVID. And then whenever it did open up, there would be people come by. And it was kind of funny watching them walk down the aisle. They'd just be walking and it was like they hit a brick wall and they would see it sitting <laughs> in our work area. We did make up stories of what yeah. it was and stuff when it was still small. I think even one time we said it was a spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> We're sending it to the moon. We couldn't have done this project without the help of Andy Cutshaw, who was our structural designer. He did all the drawings and he did the, uh, the 3D model. It really helped us figure out what it was going to look like before we started fabricating and helped us to get all the geometry correct. As you can see, there was a lot of different pieces and, and plates that had to come together and fit just right to make it. In addition to the Building 156 shop people, we had great help from Partner who did our concrete work from Macy Electric that did our lighting so it could look good at night. And then we also had great assistance within Eastman. So David Hughes, who was our electrical, uh, Tim Stidham, who was our construction manager, and then the, the great resources of our Eastman Earth Moving and our Eastman Masons who uh, got to do a little bit different with doing an elaborate paver design out inside of uh, Building One. I think anyone in this shop could be they're capable of doing exactly what we did or better. Just overall, it's for the centennial. It's a centennial month, but it gave us an opportunity to pay tribute. You know, to offer this as a tribute to a hundred years of craftsmen and craftswomen that built this plant and made it what it is. You know, I mean everybody. You know, we want to cover everybody from the bottom to the top, no matter what you put on that day. Work boots or a necktie, you know, or even a different colored hard hat. You know, it, it took all of us, Eastman employees and, and contractors too for a hundred years to make us what we are. And so what's so impressive about this team is that if you talk to them about what they've done here, they're so humble. They don't, they don't realize maybe how exciting this is. So they've done a really great job. Um, they, gave, they gave everything to this project that they would to any job that they had working in the big shop. And to me, that's just really impressive. Yeah, Jen, you know, I think this really speaks to the character of our people and the culture at Eastman. You know, no project here is ever about any just one person. It's always about all team members contributing in big ways and in small ways to get things done. And I'm incredibly proud of this team, and I can't look forward to what they're going to do next. Craig, the man standing right next to me, Craig, he knows all about the big shop. You must be so proud of this team, Craig. Absolutely, Jen. When we come together as a team, great things occur. We come together across manufacturing, build as the team so we are all stronger together. I feel very fortunate to be part of this team and humbled by the skill, the craftsmanship, and the capability of our team. Thanks, Craig. Thanks, Mark. We're sending it now back to Brad and Laura at the CDC. Wow, what an achievement. Not one molecule, but two molecules. What do they think of next? I'm not, I mean, I can't even, I'm not even surprised, but we are a company of molecules. So we have lots and lots of molecules that the big shop can make for us as we continue on this, this venture. I, I want to go over to 215. We should do that after we're done and take a look at that one. Absolutely. And I, and I look back here and go, wow, wow, it fits perfectly. Yeah, you know, you're 23 feet. You think that's pretty big, but then you look at it and go, 
it's exactly where it should be and it should have been there for a long time. Exactly. We have one more special guest uh, standing by with Bradley. Thank you, Bradford. Yeah, here with me is Perry Stuckey, Chief Human Resources Officer. Perry, so glad you can be here because we think that you can speak to what it means that this sculpture was designed, built, and installed by Eastman people. Can you give us your thoughts on that? Absolutely. Thank you, Brad. And listen, I just want to say what's important when I think about this sculpture, I see it as the handprint of our over 14,500 employees that work for us around the globe. They are the faces and men and women that make us successful. For over 100 years, we've been successful driving innovation because of the leadership, because of the impeccable men and women that make our company successful. And I can't be more proud of this team designed, developed, and created this to represent Eastman for the next 100 years and what they're doing to make us successful. I think this is a true testament to a company that drives innovation and that will be successful long term because of men and women who had the foresight to do this to make us successful. And I'm so proud of what this means to each one of them. And I want to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart. Harry, thank you so much for those eloquent eloquent words. Brad, Laura, this sculpture is here. It is absolutely magnificent. Folks can come by the CBC and see it for themselves. That's right, Bradley. Uh, it is now available for anybody to come by and see. So if you are in Kingsport, make a point to stop by. If you're visiting Kingsport, well, who knows how long that'll be before folks can do that on a regular basis. But, but surely we'll get to a point where folks come by and they're in Kingsport, certainly take a look because it is it is just impressive to see. I'm going to go walk up close to it. I haven't had a chance to do that I yet. Haven't, no, I haven't either. Prom pictures, I think, stuff like that. It's just, who knows? But it's it's here for you all to enjoy. And to all of our Eastman team members, first, thank you so much for what you bring to the company every single day. To the group that made this possible today, corporate communications, our digital media team, so many people, obviously the, those in the big shop. I don't even think that thank you is enough. Uh, you're just gone, gone above and beyond. And so for everyone out there, we thank you so much for joining us today. We thank you for what you bring to us every single day because you are what allowed us to celebrate 100 years of being around. Laura, thank you so much for riding shotgun on this adventure. Folks, thank you for watching. Enjoy and stay safe.